<laughs> it's good to be here. You guys well? I'm well. I was, I was just in Europe. I always forget when I go to Europe that there's like a toxically bro-y patriotic guy that comes out of me there, you know? Because I was a bro-y guy for a long time, and then I became a lot more liberal to get pussy in Brooklyn. And, <laughs> and because it was the right thing to do. In that order, unfortunately. <laughs> But I always forget when I go to Europe, that side of me comes out because I flew to France. I was running through the airport to make a connection. I'm running next to this French guy. We're both sh sweating, sprinting. We get to our connection, we miss it. And he turns to me and he goes, well, <laughs> at least we both did sport. <laughs> and somewhere deep within me, I was just like, fuck out of here with that gay shit, bro. <laughs> There's one sport and it's American football and we get concussions and we kill ourselves. I'm a liberal, I become a Republican in France. I think if they're so worried about us being snowflakes, they should send us to Paris for a week. It'll be like liberal birthright. Oh, you're inclusive of everyone? Try buying a croissant from a guy wearing jean shorts. One week in Paris and a non-binary person from Brooklyn will be like, my pronouns are fuck France. I don't give a shit. I don't like Europe, because I'm a Jew. And that's the end of that sentence. <laughs> I'm not a religious Jew. I feel like everyone has their different reasons for not being religious. Personally, I'm just not religious because I grew up rich. So. <laughs> just never needed that excess hope. <laughs> you guys are mad, but that's pretty funny. I <laughs> How are you gonna be a religious rich kid? <laughs> My dad bought me an apartment, so I'd like to thank God. I Thank God for private equity. <laughs> There's a little piece of the Lord in every leveraged buyout. It is weird talking about though, because I'll go up after like a black comedian and after their shows, black people come up to them and say, thank you so much for sharing your story on stage. That really meant something to me. <laughs> and then I do my shows and it's, it's usually just three straight white guys that will come up to me and they'll be like, yo, low key, we're rich as well. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not your champion, motherfucker. You know? But my family, we have our shit, you know? My sister has special needs, which that's kind of like our poor. <laughs> my sister has special needs, that's our, your financial situation. <laughs> it's hard to describe the nature of her disability. She was born neurotypical, she got sick. So the way that I describe it is she had this school project where she had to paint a picture and fill in a blank that said America is blank. And she painted a picture of a meadow with a horse in it and then she wrote, America is horses. Yes. <laughs> and I love saying that to liberal people because you guys are like, and that's exactly right. <laughs> America is plural horses. She didn't even draw two horses in the picture. If anything, it should have been America is horse. <laughs> and that's what I love about my sister. She's like a wild card. And I feel like you need a wild card on your team. Like we can all agree, if you ever go to a restaurant, you must be very polite to the wait staff. However, 50% <laughs> of the way through every meal, my sister will look the waiter dead in the eyes and go, where's my food? <laughs> so we walk into every restaurant knowing we are going to take an L by the time we leave. <laughs> we walk into a restaurant the way that Kanye walks onto a podcast. <laughs> Calm in the beginning, but he knows what he's gonna do in there. <laughs> and the best part is I get to watch the waiter's eyes as they go through like 30 seconds of like this bitch to like, oh, she's got something going on for sure. Because <laughs> my sister will be like, where's my food? And the waiter will be like, ma'am, you need to do whatever you want to do, girly. <laughs> the best part is it does bring the food out faster. <laughs> I think as the waiter goes back to the kitchen and they're like, look, table four is getting pretty exercised. It's to the point that if the food is taking too long, I'll give her a bit of a look. But it was weird growing up with a sibling with special needs, you know? Especially when I was younger, I didn't know how to process it. Like when I was really young, when I was a kid, I thought she was faking it. <laughs> I did, I thought at the end of a long day, she got back to her room, closed the door and was like, <laughs> got him again. Five consecutive days of dessert for breakfast. This family is <laughs> Split decision on that one. <laughs> Half of you guys were like, no. And a couple guys in the back were like, we back, baby. <laughs> I don't think that's a good word. It's just, I don't think the phrase special needs is much better. 
you know? Like my sister doesn't have special needs, she has basic needs. She needs to be taken care of, shown love. I have special needs. <laughs> I need to tell jokes on a stage every night to feel good about myself. <laughs> We'll see if you're still clapping after this next part. <laughs> I'm not against the word. I'm not against the word. <laughs> I'm not for it, I should say. I wouldn't like march. <laughs> bring it back, bring it back. It's just you have to understand the words that marginalize groups, they're relevant to the struggles those groups face. And my sister doesn't even know what that word means. So for her to be offended by it, I'd have to teach her what it means and then teach her she should be offended. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'd have to be like, come in here, champ. <laughs> you having a good day? <laughs> not for long, you're not. <laughs> and she'd be like, what's that word? And I'd be like, I think it's when you say America is horses. So. 